Till now, we have seen what is stress, what is a state of stress at a given point, and we have also seen what are different stress state conditions. Now we'll see what is strain. When we say strain, intuitively displacements comes to our mind. What do I mean by that? So let me draw element, let's say A, B, C, D, which gets displaced to A dash, B dash, C dash and D dash. So this change from A, B, C, D to A dash, B dash can have happen because of change in volume. Or I call it as dilation or change in shape. I call it as distortion. Now this changes in displacement that is point A, B, C, D are displacing to A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash. These displacements are very small. They are very small. They are homogeneous and they vary linearly. Let me write it down those points. So this displacement are small homogeneous and very linearly and this displacement can also can be find you can find it out using geometrical relations and thus they you can apply them to a continuous media so this a, B, C, D, the displacements to A dash, B dash, C dash and D dash, you can find it out using some geometric relations and they vary linearly with their positions. So with this, uh, let me, let us go and understand what is a concept of strain. So it is a measure of deformation. When we, if you recall, when you discussed about stress strain curve, we discussed about what is fracture stress. The strain corresponding to fracture stress is called as a fracture strain and we call, considered it has to be a measure of deformation. Now we will be dealing with the concept of strain itself. This concept of strain is more complex. The idea of strain is more complex to understand than stress. Let's take an example of this member which is hinged at one end, let's say at point O and I stretch it along X1. Let me mark three points on this member and let, let us name them as A, B, C. Now along when, when we pull this member along X1 uh, using a tensile force, this member gets elongated and this elongates in this fashion. Now what happens to these points A, B, C? Let's look at. So point O remains here, it doesn't change while point A displaces to some extent along X1. Point B will also displaces to some extent along X1 and point C displaces to a maximum extent as compared to A and B. You can see that the point A is displaced uh, to a lower extent as compared to point B while point B has displaced to a lower extent than point C. Whereas if you look at closely the displacements which this points going through let me name these points as O dash, A dash, B dash, C dash. So these displacements which these points are experiencing under this tensile stress is different or what I can say varying linearly with respect to their positions from this point O. That means if point C is at the extreme, it displaces to a maximum value and point A is closer to O, so it displaces to a lower value as compared to point C. Let me mark these displacements versus x1 and let me mark this point O which is origin, I call it as 0, 0. Let, let us mark these points A and B. Let us also mark the, the distance between them as delta x1. Now when point A moves to point A dash by u1, the displacement I call it as u1. I want to find out how much point B has displaced to B dash. So we mentioned that this U varies linearly and I can find out what is a point A dash corresponding that is a displacement of point A. 
that is a dash I have marked it as u1 here. Now to find out how much point b has moved I marked here that displacement as b dash. The easy way is to find out using a Taylor expansion. You already know it. So let's say I call it as a displacement at point b dash is equal to u a dash plus first derivative of u1 with respect to x1 into dx. Now if I see u a dash is nothing but u1 and dx I can mark it as over at length ab so that becomes delta x1. So I can write it at the displacement at point b dash b u1 plus del u1 upon del x1 into delta x1. Is using a Taylor series expansion we have seen. Similarly, another way we can see that let's say I have point A moving to A dash by u1 and I want to find out how much by point B is moving that is B dash. So what I can do is that I can take a slope of this region linearly varying region that is nothing but del u upon del x1 and I multiply with this distance that is delta x1. So you get the same result which we got using a Taylor expansion. Now let's come back and see how to define a strain. So what I mean is that this distance b to b dash is u1 plus del u1 upon del x1 into delta x1. This is what we have marked here. Now let's find out a strain along x1. I define normal strain as a dash b dash minus a b upon a b. Definition of strain that is final length minus original length upon original length. Now this epsilon 1 1 which I am calling that is a normal strain along x1 is to find out what is a dash b dash minus a b upon a b. So this value which I have put is nothing but a change in length that is delta L. How I am saying this you can see that I have B dash I have A dash. So this is a value of B dash minus A dash which is nothing but a change in length that is delta L. And this is delta X1. So which is a original length AB. And another alternative way you can see from this geometrical relations here which I have mentioned here also Let's say I want to find out a dash b dash. Now let's check this figure and let me write it down. So I want to find out a dash b dash which is nothing but this distance. So it comprises of this part 1 and 2. So I already know 2 which I have figured it out. What is 1? One? 1 is delta x1 minus u1. So this is what 1 plus 2 which is u1 plus del u1 upon del x1 into delta x1 will give me a dash b dash. So I find out what is a dash b dash using simple geometrical relations and when I plug in this in this relation let me do that also let me write it down. So you have normal strain epsilon 1 1. Now I have del a dash b dash as delta x1 plus del u1 on del x1 into delta x1 minus a b is your delta x1. Put it over here and a b is delta x1 again. So this will get cancelled out and this also will get cancelled out. So what that we have epsilon 1 1 as du 1 upon dx 1. Now I can write it as epsilon 1 1 as a normal strain. So you I have a partial derivative of u 1 that is a displacement along x 1. Now we have defined normal strain and there are shear stresses which also develop shear strains. So let's see what is shear strain or how to define shear strain also. So we have shear strain which causes change in shape. This is very important. 
the shear strengths also lead in the change in shape let me take an example i have x1 x2 marked over here and i take an element which is a rectangular in uh, which is a square in shape a rectangular in shape whatever you can consider so i take an element like this and let me mark these two points a and b let's say point a is at at a distance of delta x1 from o and point b is delta x2 from o and this element undergoes a shape change under applied stress in this fashion let me call this shape change or change in angles as alpha and beta now that this change in angles is very small what i have shown is an exaggerated image but in reality when we are considering the concept of strain considering that there is a small changes in angles so if you look at this deformed element it also involves a rotation along x1 and x2 we will see it in our further slides so we have got this deformed element now let me define shear strain that is gamma 1 2 you can say that the shear strain which i have to define is that change in angles how can i find it out so i have i mark this point a dash b dash so my point a has moved from a to a dash and b to b dash so these are the changes in the angles uh, which quantifies shear strain and i quantified them in this fashion that is pi by 2 which was original angle minus angle a dash o b dash and you can see clearly that this gamma 1 2 which i have marked as shear strain is alpha plus beta from this geometry you can clearly find out that gamma 1 2 is alpha plus beta now our job is to find out what is gamma 1 2 is so let me take this displacement versus x1 position and let me mark the displacement along x1 as u1 and displacement along x2 as u2 let me mark this point a here which is at a distance of x1 from o now as we see that this displacement is varying linearly i can find out what is its position that is a dash this is what we, we are interested in we want to find out what is the displacement a to a dash if you look at this clearly what exactly this displacement is occurring for this point a is along x2 that is along u2 so i want to find out what is a dash that is this displacement that we can do using a taylor expansion also so i want to find out change in u2 with its initial position which is u00 and that can be identified as del u2 upon del x1 that is change in u2 small change in u2 because small change in x1 as this point a is on x1 into dx now this u00 which is at this position so u2 is zero here so what you get is this del u2 upon del x1 into delta x1 this displacement is del u2 on del x1 into delta x1 now i can see that this angle is alpha and i know this this displacement of a to a dash and i also know what is oa which is delta x1 i can find it out what is tan alpha and i define tan alpha is equal to del u2 upon del x1 into delta x upon delta x1 now this delta x1 delta x1 gets cancelled and what you have is tan alpha is equal to del u2 upon del x1 now since this angles are very small we can use this identity as tan alpha is equal to alpha and i can say that alpha is equal to del u2 upon del x1 similarly you can find out this displacement 
this displacement at point B of point B to B dash is occurring horizontally. So I differentiate u1 with respect to x2 and you can get the, this displacement as del u1 upon del x2 into delta x2 and I can find out what is angle beta similarly uh, beta is small so I can say that tan beta is equal to beta and I can say that beta is equal to del u1 upon del x2. I know now these two angles that is alpha and beta when I plug in into this relation what I get is that shear strain that is gamma 1 2 which I have defined as alpha plus beta will be del u2 upon del x1 plus del u1 upon del x2. You see here that the partial differentiation of u2 with x1 and u1 with respect to x2. So this is how we have defined a shear strain. Now let's look at sign conventions for this normal strain and shear strain. So normal strain. Normal strains are very straightforward. When you have tensile load or stress acting on a material, it causes elongation. And when you have compressive stress on a material, it causes a reduction in length. So I have an extension. I call it as a positive strain and I have reduction in length. I call it as a negative. That is very straightforward for normal strain. Now what about shear strain? So let me consider this element and under up applied shear stress it distorts in this way and I have called this angle as alpha. So to move this element in this fashion you need to apply shear stress in this way. So this shear stress you can see that this shear stress is acting like consider this shear stress which is acting on a positive phase along positive direction. Similarly this shear stress is also acting on a positive phase along positive direction that such kind of stress when they act they they reduce this angle to alpha so angle decreases and this kind of shear strain which are developed are positive in nature we call this kind of shear strains to be positive similarly you can have another way by this element can distort in this fashion and let's say this angle alpha increases. This increase in angle, I call such kind of shear strain to be negative. Now to, to distort this element in this way, what is or to have the shape change in this way where angle increases, that is shear strains are negative, how the stresses should apply? They should apply on a positive phase in a negative direction. So I have shear stress acting like this and this is also a positive phase but in a negative direction. Shear stress acts in this way and such kind of strains developed in this kind of element are negative. So with this I will stop here.